saving one dog will not change the world, but surely for that one dog, the world will change forever. This is my foster journey. Corbin was my very first foster. He came into my life at a time I really needed him the most. He was the best first foster I could have asked for. Corbin loved his toys. He also loved to play with other dogs. He eventually went on to another foster home where he was adopted by a wonderful family. This foster was especially important to me since I adopted him. We called them foster failures. Kona came to me as my second foster. He was very skinny and had a broken leg when we rescued him from the shelter. Nursing him back to health really helped us bond, and I just knew deep down in my heart he would be mine forever. Kona is the spunkiest, most energetic, and craziest puppy. He loves to run around, play with his toys and other dogs. He loves walks and loves to snuggle with me at night. We go on a lot of adventures together, and I wouldn't want it any other way. So glad he is with me forever. Foster number three was Tex. Tex was such a happy dog. He got along with Kona very well. They would play non-stop. Tex listened so well and was a very easy foster. I had Tex for about a month before he was adopted. When I met the family that was going to adopt him, I knew they were the perfect fit. fourth foster. She was a senior dog at six years old, but she never let her age show. She was a very playful dog and got along very well with Kona. Zoe was a little fearful of new people and dogs because of her previous life. She was not treated well before our rescue got her. Therefore, it took her a little bit of time to warm up. However, once she did, she was an angel. It took Zoe a little long to find her forever home, but she eventually did, and those six years of waiting were worth it. have enough great things to say about him. He was seriously the perfect dog. If circumstances were different at the time, I definitely would have adopted Tommy too. Tommy was a very happy dog and loved life. He especially loved playing with his foster brother, Kona. Luckily for me, Tommy was adopted by another foster mom in our group. So we have been talking about meeting up for a play date. Kona will be so excited. I can't wait. Lila was my sixth foster and was such a sweetheart. She loved to give kisses and snuggle. We would take naps together all the time. Lila made the cutest little faces. Kona really enjoyed her company. The family that adopted her has been super sweet and has kept me updated with how she is fitting into her new life. They even invited me over for dinner to see her. Charlie is my seventh and current foster. He has been the hardest foster I've had for many different reasons. When I first got Charlie, he was in bad shape. He was matted all over, had pee stains all over his fur, and didn't know how to be a dog. Charlie was also very anxious and broke out of his crate several times and destroyed my bedroom. On top of all that, he was tested positive for heartworm. It was hard not to give up on him, but I knew all he needed was a little bit of love. It took Charlie a very long time to warm up but now he is the perfect dog. He will be retested for heartworm at the beginning of next week and he should be cleared. If he is negative, he will have to get neutered and then he will be available for adoption. I have had Charlie for over six months and he has touched my heart in so many ways. No doubt, he will be the hardest one to say goodbye to. Fostering dogs has definitely changed my life for the better. While there is now more dog hair, toys, stuffing, and early morning wake-ups, I wouldn't change it for the world. When people say, I couldn't foster because it would be too hard to give them up, I tell them, how can it be harder than knowing a dog died because no foster stepped up? 
And that is why I do it time and time again, one tail at a time. Because remember, saving one dog will not change the world, but surely for that one dog, the world will change forever.